now why mind is behaving like a monkey why it is not in my control all that now you will understand in next 15 minutes and this is going to i am i am inviting now professor kumareshan to explain about mind professor kumareshan has more than 20 years of experience with our sky system and he started the center in canada and in abu dhabi he did he did contribute to the sky services a lot and uh, he is a big asset to a world community service center particularly for qatar he has been with us for the last 3 years now any time if somebody is abs absent or uh, somebody has not turned up for meditation or any lectures or any introspection uh, syllabus or topic he is the one person any time i can call and he will be happy to give that lecture such a flexible uh, gentleman and he not only uses his uh, intelligence to give lectures even physically he helps us a lot with this small introduction now i invite professor kumareshan to uh, explain us enlighten us about mind sir please no thanks thank thank you all uh, again uh, you are able to hear me and uh, you are able to see the presentation slides yes okay i'll continue so let's we talked about yesterday about the physical body and we'll move from there on to mind so we'll slightly move on so yesterday we spoke about the physical body and we came up to the biomedicism we all had an experiment to uh, understand what is biomedicism so we will go on from there that is where the mind comes again we will be first defining the mind then we will understand what swami ji defines mind in three different categories the same mind if you take in one form of you know like three parameters you can say how mind can be defined and classified in three different ways we will see all the three different ways uh, three different ways and then we'll go on from there so okay mind is nothing but the biomagnetism which is the extended activity of the life force is called mind you know the you, we we said that there is a life force and the biomagnetism is there this collection of these waves is called mind okay uh, the collection of the biomagnetic force which comes for all of from our life force is called mind all uh, when you want if it's a very clear way of saying mind in a very medical term is mind is nothing but the psychic extension of life force that is what the medical world puts it at so for us understanding we will understand it as the extended activity of the life force is called mind which is basically the biomagnetism the spread of the biomagnetism collectively we call it as mind so biomagnetism functions as the mind in the living beings it transforms into the five sensory perceptions of pressure sound light taste and smell as well as the mind so biomagnetism we saw right so the same biomagnetism what happens is we spend through our sensory uh, sensory perceptions like you know by our skin as pressure by our uh, mouth as taste and by our nose as smell eyes as light and sound as it through our ears so it is the same biomagnetism we spend through it and feel it so people generally might have a question how is one biomagnetism are we spending through these five senses and the same biomagnetism let's take for example electricity when a fan runs we get air you know air or a pressure on us you know the difference in temperature but what is the consumption electricity when we put light the tube light it's the light you know but what is the consumption same electrical energy when we have say an iron box you know it's a heat right or you take an audio music system the output is sound but what is the consumption at the back end we call it electricity similarly it is this biomagnetism what we consume like the electricity consumption by in all these appliances and that is what get transforms in this biomagnetism gets consumed in this five sensory perceptions and as well as in mind also in mind also we consume this biomagnetic energy again the functions of mind is basically a uh, creation of imprints in the form of characterized knots expanding them into thoughts and inner visions so we'll see this through an example light rays for example you're seeing a cow as shown in the big you're seeing a cow or an elephant think of anything light rays that reflect from an object enters through our eyes and create an image in the size of a small mosquito normally you would have seen in pictures or something or if you see in your eye 
uh, black eye pupil, you can see that reflection of what you see as a small one. Then this is transferred to the brain in the form of a small micro dot. Now, the micro dot is transferred from here to the genetic center to the brain where the biomedicine converts into thoughts. We will just look at the mind and thoughts a little later, but understand this particular part. Now, there are eight special things of a living things. They are, you know, uh, everybody called uh, eight special. Eight special features of living beings. One is body. The second is life force. Then the third is biomaxim. Fourth is genetic center. Then fifth is brain. Sixth is soul. Seven is mind. And eighth is sensual organs, sense organs. So we will see one by one. Now, what is the body? We have clearly seen yesterday. It is made up of the five states of matter and tissues, body, cells, everything. We saw very clearly yesterday. Then what is life force? It's the free energy particles circulating within the body, constituting the life force. Then is the genetic center. Now, this is one we need to little stand here and understand. It is the vortex created by the circulating biomedicine under the principles of specific gravity in the middle of the body. We said yesterday, we all have completely biomedicine in the body, which we also experience through that small experiment through the hand. And today I defined as the biomedicine is the, the collection of this biomedicine is these waves is called the mind. Now, you know that in the law of gravity, anything, any magnetism has a center or the center of gravity, right? So that's what we have learned. For any object which has magnetism in it, there is a center of gravity. So that center of gravity within the human being or within living things is called the genetic center. It is the vortex created by the circulating biomedicine under the principles of gravity in the middle of the body. So that's called genetic center. So this genetic center is the what one which is like a hard disk in our computer. You know, it keeps all the records, what you see, what you hear, everything, what we experience through the mind. You know, whatever we experience through the mind, it is kept here. So genetic center, if you for a human being, you see, look at the wave spreading here. So the middle part is take the height, the width and the thickness of the body. The center of the body will have the will have the genetic center or or we can say the muladhar chakra and the chakras that forms the genetic center of the body. Now, brain, biomedicine working through the cells of the brain cognizes the transformation of biomedicine into pressure, sound, light, taste, and smell in other parts of the body. So suppose I'm drinking a cup of coffee. What happens is that smell, you have a coffee aroma, then also a taste. Now these two, is, these two are the biomedicine spent through my, uh, my tongue and the nose and this transformation of biomagnetism is recognized in the brain cells. You know, no, this is coffee smell because we, it compares to the last one, what we heard. And it's also saying, oh, it has more sugar or a less sugar because it compares what you generally drink. So then it compares and it processes in the brain. That is what the brain does. So brain, you know, working through the brain, this basically does it. Now cells, now let's just slightly define the soul. Imprints of this experience undergone by the living thing as well as those of forefathers passed to hereditary are contained in the genetic center. Now, what is in the genetic center is all the imprints and experience by all this, our hereditary is passed on through this genetic center imprints only from the sperm and the ovum of the parents. You get it here and it is contained in the genetic center. This is the soul of a living being. Now, mind. Now, the imprints of this experience stored in the genetic center expands to form the mind according to the nodes, habits, and sequences. So what does the mind do? The function of the mind is it is to expand, to bring it, and show it us in the brain, whenever we need it. Suppose I give an example. Uh, imagine an elephant, what you saw. So last time, what you saw. Now, somewhere it is stored in your genetic center. The mind brings it, and the biomedic energy is bring and expanded through your brain. And you now visualize yourself in your memory or in your mind. You are visualizing an elephant, what you see in the last time, physically, maybe in a temple or in a zoo or in a somewhere, wherever you saw. So that is what the mind. So the same thing happens, whatever we experience through these five senses, and it is, you know, what you call, it is done or processed in the brain. It is now compressed and kept in the mind. The mind does this both. 
Now, sensory organs, you know, we have all the five sensory organs, skin, tongue, nose, eyes and ears are the five sense organs that help perceive the external world. These are the only five organs we have our uh, link to the ex this materialistic world. How do we interact with this, with this world? Only with these five, nothing else. And we process in the brain all these signals received through these five senses. Now, now let's come to the four stages of mind. Now there are definitions of, slowly the definition, of, I said three definitions of uh, mind. Now before that, what are the stages of the mind? So basically, pleasure, pain, peace, ecstasy. You know, uh, yesterday I think in the class, we a uh, little in the question and answer session, the other class, the professor Muthusar explained about difference between peace, ecstasy, or you know, bliss. So, you know, we have a pleasure when we are happy, we you something and we have pleasure. Then when we have pain, we go through a pain or a sorrow. Then we are absolutely peace. Then ecstasy is, you know, the blissful. So we, these are the four stages of mind or the experience of a mind can have. Now we'll slowly go to one, one definition. Uh, Swamiji explains there are five different of stages of mind or five kosas or five levels, he says, based on exactly what you think upon. Okay. So they are Annamaya Kosa, Manomaya Kosa, Pranamaya Kosa, Vijnanamaya Kosa, or Anandamaya Kosa. These are based on exactly what are the what is our mind thinking about. So Annamaya Kosa is, is the mind remains concerned with the needs of the physical body related to the outside world and and through the sense organs and going through the experiences of pleasure or pain. You know, all the thoughts, all the thoughts in the mind, which are related to our bodily needs, you know, food or, you know, temperature, or these are the called bodily needs. So any of this state of the mind, thinking about this is called, we are saying in the state of, it's like, you know, you are wearing five sheets of sweater. You know, each one has its own work. The next one is basically, Manomaya Kosa is basically the emotional level. You know, watching a TV, listen to your music. Is it really a need? Is it without that, can you live? Yes, I can live without it. If I don't hear the music, I don't die. You know, but if you need a food, yes, you need. Food is a need. So similarly, Manomaya Kosa is basically, it is just for the mental pleasures. Like, you know, listening to your... Um, uh, or seeing a, a favorite movie, actor's favorite movie, or listening to your favorite music, listening to your, listening to your favorite uh, you know, series or movies or anything, that comes under Manomaya Kosa. Then the next one comes is the uh, Pranamaya Kosa, where the mind thinks about the expanded stage, realizes itself, and thinks about our life. What is this life on? Why have I come into our life? What is this life? You know, next going beyond the uh, body needs, and the mental pleasures, that's called um, Pranamaya Kosa. If the name Pranan means life in Sanskrit, that's where this version comes from. Then Vijnanamaya Kosa is basically, Vijnana means, the, again, the word is science. When the brain begins to understand between the connection between ourselves, the solar system, what would have been made up of, how does this universe come into this? This is all you're going behind your body and thinking, how, what are the celestial bodies? And this comes under Vijnana Maya Kosa. Then the, then the fourth one is Ananda Maya Kosa, where you understand about the absolute space and how this absolute space is there, what is your connection to that. And you at, when you go to reach that state, you come to a state of bliss. You understand it very clearly. So this is called Ananda Maya Kosa. Now these are the five basically based on what it thinks. Now again, Swamiji gives another, you know, stages of mind you know uh, what are the different stages of mind